talk about vegetable stock paste. So this is the first recipe you're going to make in your Thermomix for so many reasons. One, it's just a really great recipe to help you get comfortable with your Thermomix. Two, you're gonna use it in so much of your Thermomix cooking. You'll kick yourself if you don't make it because you're going to get to cook something and it's gonna ask you to add vegetable stock paste and you'll be like, damn, I wish I listened to Courtney and made it first. So, I'll get started. I'm just gonna press start cooking and it's now asking me for 200 grams of celery. So, as you can see, I've got everything cut up and ready to go here. So my celery, how big do I need to cut it? About the size of your little finger. Because you want it to be able to, to use as a guide, get your lid, but you want to be able to put it through the hole that way. Not that way, because you could fit it, anything in there, but this way. So about five centimeters, size of your little finger is, is your rule of thumb. So, I'm just gonna add all that in. I've got 240 grams, and you know what? Doesn't matter, we're not making a cake here. Don't have to be too precise, as long as we don't go over the max line, we'll be all good. So if you've got a little bit of celery left over from what you've bought, just chuck it in. Two carrots, same thing with your carrots, about the size of your little finger. I haven't peeled mine, but you can peel yours if you want to. So we're not weighing those, it's just two carrots. Next, one brown onion cut in half. Just cut in half. This is gonna be one of the things you love the most about your Thermomix, I promise. No chopping onions, just cut it in half. Chuck it in. One fresh tomato, cut in half. One zucchini, cut into pieces. Two garlic cloves. Now, I've got three because they were small. Now our herbs. So it says one dried bay leaf optional. I've got a bay tree, so I just use a fresh one. Some basil. Sage. Now, if you can't get this stuff, don't worry about it. I'm now growing all of this, so it makes my life a lot easier when I'm making my stock. Rosemary. Parsley. So I do have lots of parsley. I am filling this bowl quite full. Okay. So now it says to insert measuring cup in a mixing bowl lid. But what I'm going to do is because I do have quite a lot of stuff in there, I'm going to get my spatula and I'm going to use it to help. You might need to do it. Bit of a start here. Get it chopping. chopped up except I really stretched the limit of that bowl with that parsley so what I'm going to do I could leave it it's only parsley it's going to cook anyway but I'm just going to go back and repeat the step so I stopped that before it got to for 10 seconds just by pushing the select the dial. There we go. Check that out. All chopped up. It smells so good. Okay. Scrape the sides. Next, 150 grams of rock salt. Now you might be thinking, that's a lot of salt. Yes, it is a lot of salt but it is the preserving agent in your stock. 
So if you have a think about it, it is a paste. And you're only using like a teaspoon at a time or a tablespoon and adding water. So the actual amount of salt over that quantity once you've added the water is not that high. Um, olive oil. So it says a tablespoon of olive oil. Now, oops. depending on how you like to cook, you might want to get out your tablespoon. Me, not so much. That's another thing to wash up. You could guess. Like I said, we're not making a cake. You just have a little swig around. Or you can come over, press the three little dots at the top, press scales, and you can weigh in about 20 grams. Now you're cooking. I'll come back and show you when it's done. Okay, stock paste is all done. So that 20 minutes is up and it's cooked. And what we're going to do now is puree it. So it says to turn speed select to speed 5, then increase speed gradually to speed 9. So you want to take about 10 seconds to get from 0 to to nine, oh, five to nine, sorry. So turn your speed selector around to five and then take about 10 seconds to get to nine. You'll hear it, it kind of catches up to itself. It's got an inbuilt graduator. It'll make sense once you hear the sound. Let's go. done. So transfer into a sealable container and place in the fridge until ready to use. So I've got this container, I could probably do with an upgrade of a container, I've had this one since I first made my stock paste. I've got it labelled, has washed off a little bit, but I do recommend that you do label it because you know some well-meaning person will come into your fridge, think it's soup, think it's baby food or something and use it how it's not meant to be used. So, I'm just going to pour that in there. So I've got most of that out, but there's some, you know, stuff still floating around that bowl. What I'm going to do is instead of cleaning it with dishwashing liquid like I would normally do, I'm just going to put some water in it. So, finish, I'm going to swipe across to the scales and I'm going to weigh in a litre. So a thousand grams. all that stuff in my bowl. Now I'm just going to turn it to speed six and then I'm going to put it on reverse. So I'm going to like pulse it a little bit and then I'm going to go fast and get that water going up into the lid and clean the lid. So. 
Now, if I didn't want to use that, I would put a drop of dishwashing liquid in with that and then I would have a clean bowl. But, I've got a jar here. Yeah, get my, whoops. Straight out of the dishwasher. Love my jam funnel. I'm never going to make jam, but I use it for so much. So, I'm just going to pour that into here. And I've now got a liquid stock ready to make a risotto or a soup, something like that. Um, so I'll put that in the fridge. Now your um, stock paste, this will last in your fridge for six months. However, if six months time rolls around and you still have this same batch of stock paste, I'd probably suggest calling me or your consultant because you're probably not using your Thermomix as much as you were hoping to. So make your stock paste. Write the date on it so you can remember when you made it. Um, but yeah, it will last for six months in your fridge. You can freeze it, but because it does have so much salt in it, it won't actually go solid. So you could put it in your fridge a freezer and you can still scoop it out of the container. But you're going to use it so much, just have it in your fridge and you'll use it up in, let's say, three months. I use mine a lot. I probably, I reckon every six to eight weeks I'm making a new batch. So yeah. Make the stock pace, let me know what you think and I'll catch you soon. Bye.